How's it going everybody? It's Chad coming to you from an ice bathtub. So I'm going to talk about cold thermogenesis. It's something that I do with regularity uh, during the warmer months. I do it um, in a bathtub. During the colder months I will go jump in a river or jump in you know part of a lake that isn't uh, frozen. And more or less I started doing this well I was really I've always been into the cold for some strange reason, but um, you know, I got into this years ago when I started to read about the um, Tumo Tibetans, which uh, they do a, um, a meditation where they stay warm doing breath work and a whole bunch of other, there's a lot more to it than just breath work when you really look deep into it, but they train their bodies to withstand extreme colds. Now I got uh, interested in this even deeper when I first found out about Wim Hof, uh, also known as the Iceman. And, um, you know, I just, I would practice it on and off. And then a few years back, I got really sick. And during, I think it had a lot to do with uh, mold toxicity as well as I had mercury amalgams taken out. And just basically my whole system went and got shot to shit. So, but it, during this whole trying to get better, I was extremely inflamed. I mean, my whole face would just well up it was kind of like a histamine reaction but I can't I can't quite call it that but I would just use ice baths I would come home every night from work and just uh, I would get in here and just keep myself uh, just chill myself down and I would hang out for about 30 to 45 minutes and see and, and in that process I was able to keep my inflammatory markers really low in fact if I remember correctly I think my HSCRP, which is a uh, it's highly sensitive C-reactive protein, which is a cardiac marker, uh, that was down around 0.3, which is extremely low, which is a good thing. Uh, that's basically, it's a good marker for heart disease. So uh, that's I was able to keep that thing really low, and uh, many others who do do this are able to reduce their HSCRP big time. Now, it can also be useful for weight loss. Uh, I'm pretty lean, so I can't really say that I've had, you know, I wasn't, it's never been my uh, goal with using cold thermogenesis, but what it does is it will actually convert the fat in your body to what is called brown, uh, brown adipose tissue, which is eventually, it's essentially brown fat, which is what, um, like, babies have a lot of brown fat. And this brown fat is really dense in mitochondria, and mitochondria uh, it gives off energy, it gives off a, a lot of energy, this particular brown fat, and it helps to uh, it helps people to lose weight because your white fat, which is what most adults have, that is what can be problematic, especially visceral fat. Visceral fat is fat that is around the organs. So a lot of times when you see people who have puffed out bellies, their their actual fat on the outside of say their their, their uh, like stomach area, in a lot of cases. Even if they're really obese, it might only be that thick, but their belly is gigantic. And that is because of all the visceral fat that is actually around the organs. It's around the intestinal tract and see where it really, really becomes problematic is when it's around your heart. Because then it starts to have a lot of constricting uh, actions to it. But, um, you know, it's a fun thing to get into. I've found a lot of benefit from it and I find it, I mean, at this point, very relaxing. And also, if you happen to live in a cold climate, it's very... Uh, uh, you know, makes you a little bit more hardy, or at least that's what I've found. So if you want to start doing this, just start out, I mean, a lot of people just start taking a cold shower, and that's a great place to start. And then just work your way into getting into a cold bathtub and just start to add ice. I mean, like right now, most of it's melted at this point, but tonight I would say, I think I, I had about 20 pounds of ice in here. So I've gone as high as... I, my like little record was I did 45 minutes in a tub with, uh, what did I, I think I had 75 pounds of ice, so, and I got really, really cold on that one, and that was, uh, that, that was beyond the therapeutic limit, but, uh, you kind of get the drift, so, and, you know, there's some questions as to, um, 
Well, uh, well, actually, a question I'm sure that's come up with a lot of people who are men ask me about, you know, what about down there? Well, what I would do in a lot of cases is just wear something like bike shorts that has almost like a wetsuit kind of effect to it. So uh, it don't really get that cold, or at least not in any uh, dangerous way. But a lot of people will use a uh, compression shirts or compression shorts because it kind of gives you a little bit of a buffer between actual ice on you and all that in your skin because you don't want it to burn. You want to get maybe a little bit of redness to your skin, uh, like a cherry red, but you don't want to, uh, you don't want to burn yourself. So please pay attention to that. And also, you know, a lot of people when they start out, they'll keep their, their head out. Um, I'm going to dunk after I'm done this, but keep their head out and they'll keep, keep, uh, keep uh, typically keep their hands and feet out as well. Because a lot of people, especially with circulation issues, you're going to get cold there. And you know, the, the thing is, is just to, if you see, think that you'll derive benefit from it, ease into it. There's no reason to rush. There's no reason to harm yourself. You can always go back and push it a little bit more the next day. So just go easy with it. And when you're just first starting out, and it, also if you have weight to lose, you want to just start out doing it, you know, maybe 10 minutes. You just, you don't want to get yourself to the point of shivering when you're first starting out just because of getting used to it. And if you are overweight, when you uh, are first starting out, you have an exorbitant amount of uh, white adipose tissue, so that white fat. So what you'll do is if you slowly ease into it, uh, you will convert your brown fat into white fat. So you're getting that more dense mitochondrial fat. And see most of this, this brown fat, it's actually on the back of the neck and it goes into in between the shoulder blades and kind of down the, uh, the back. Um, supposedly, I think you can develop some on your shoulders, but it's mostly on your back and babies. You can Google an image of, um, you know, something like brown adipose fat in babies. And there's usually charts that will show you that uh, a good chunk of their uh, fat is brown. So then as you ease into it and as you've lost some weight and if you feel adventurous, you can push it and get yourself to the point of shivering. But I will say, at least I'll just speak for myself. I've found that I will um, get to a point, like I can stay in for say, like, you know, half hour, 45 minutes. And then after I get out, I'll start to shiver about 10 minutes after I've gotten out. So I usually find that like, that's a good, that's a good cutoff, especially if it's at night. Cause I don't really, when I, you know, getting ready to go to bed, I don't feel like just laying there shaking. But, you know, it's fun. Experiment. Ask questions if you got it. Uh, if you have done this, I'd love to hear your experiences because it's always good to just pass information around. And anyways, so yeah, go out, have fun, and get cool, and I'll see you later.